in the rest of the video, you're going to see us show a very simple operation of a slurry movement process. This looks unimpressive. Even I think it looks unimpressive. So why are we showing this to you? Because it turns out that moving the biomass through your facility is pretty much the least simple part of the whole process. The chemistry of extraction is simple. Extractions have been done for thousands of years. People learned that if you make alcohol and you put plants in it, things go into the alcohols. And then eventually you can filter them out. That part of the process is fairly simple. There's a lot of devil in the details, but the fundamentals are there. Solvent recovery, again, is an established process. We're using a different technology than others, but others will catch on to that. One of the more difficult problems to solve that we've found is how do you, in a compliant manner, handle what is intended to be a fully continuous operation while still having batch separation and cleaning between product batches? How do you ensure that if you take some material and you run it through your system and it ends up with pesticides in it, that the next material is not going to be contaminated? This is extremely important from a product safety standpoint. It's also important from a GMP perspective. This is mandatory. You need to be able to do this if you want to play on the world stage. So we looked at the possibility of using some form of conveyor. We would use a screw auger or a disc conveyor or other method to move the biomass from our storage area and into the extraction system. Unfortunately, the cleaning process for these systems is not quick, it's not simple, and time is money, so it's not cheap. The way our process is going to work is our dried and milled biomass will get put into batch reactors, into batch tanks. These are going to be approximately 3,000 liters a piece, and each one will hold 20 to 30 minutes worth of biomass. You can see on the lid that we've got inlet ports for our solvent, for our nitrogen, for our inerting system, for our safety of our workers and our process, and for the various other sensor connections that we're going to have on these tanks. These will be loaded into the system dry, and they will be connected via this bottom outlet port onto into the pumping system. We'll have a mixer attached to the top. When the system is attached, it will be fully nitrogen inerted. When it is safe to do so, our solvent matrix will be applied to the biomass and it'll be agitated. Once it's been thoroughly wetted, it will be pumped out of this vessel and into a secondary holding vessel prior to the solid liquid separation stage. Once all the slurry has been evacuated from the vessel, we'll have a water attachment that sprays through a spray ball like this. This will ensure that there is no biomass remaining in the tank when we're done with it, and that the tank comes out clean. There will be no solvent, no biomass, and it'll be ready to be filled again if that filled material is from the same batch. If it is from a different batch, there will of course be a terminal cleaning process on that vessel. This system design allows us a fully continuous operation from a process perspective while having no concern of contamination between product batches or lots. Uh, today we'll be taking you through a quick demonstration of some of the process optimization and operational qualifications that we've been undertaking here at NCAN in our solvent extraction system. Uh, specifically, we'll be looking at the slurry loop. So first we'll start that by using uh, pneumatic conveyance to load milled hemp into the slurry tank. Once the tank is fully loaded with the biomass, um, the system will then, uh, in the production form, um, be nitrogen inerted, so that there's no potential for an explosive atmosphere because we are dealing with flammable solvents. Uh, it will then be charged with the liquid portion. Uh, in this iteration, of course, we're using water because we have yet to receive our Health Canada um, production license. Um, once the appropriate ratio of uh, liquid to biomass has been added into the tank, um, the agitator will actuate. Um, we're using uh, these mixing blades designed by a former uh, NASA design engineer. If you know anything about mixing technologies, uh, you can see that there's a lot more thought put into these than the uh, triangle stamped on a sheet metal uh, welded onto a stick that most 
industries use. Because of the efficiency of these mixing blades, we're able to use a lower solvent ratio and still have a pumpable slurry than most other um, extractors. We're able to use about 75% as much liquid as most other companies. Once that emulsification process is fully completed, as Lincoln described, then we'll be able to uh, pump the liquid using the centrifugal pump, or the slurry, I should say, into our centrifuge, which is for the first stage drying to get the cannabinoid-laden solvents out of that slurry. Uh, and once that's complete, we would then move on to further steps in the post-processing chain to uh, recover those valuable cannabinoids. But today, like I say, we'll just be keeping it very much to the simplicity of the slurry loop. So here you can see the HMI control panel for the uh, centrifuge system that you've just seen. Um, we've got all the various uh, functions over here. Uh, we've got the ability to turn the mixer on and off. That's pneumatically controlled. We have the ability to uh, turn the centrifuge on and off. And you can see that it shows the current RPM as it's ramping and it's slowing down. Uh, we have the slurry pump which again, we can turn on and off. Ooh, not too long right now. And the uh, water valve on and off, and that's to fill the tank. Um, we have the ability to request a specific volume of liquid to go into the tank. Um, we could set 100 liters here and hit fill, and it would dump 100 liters into the tank. We won't do that right now because this is a really slow flow system. And then uh, the main operations is controlled by this. Um, we've got the fill volume, so how much slurry we're putting into the centrifuge, um, what the um, speed of the basket is for the drying speed, and then what's the time uh, for the drying. Um, so the way that this process works is it will um, speed up the, uh, spin up the centrifuge, dump the slurry in, spin the centrifuge up faster to the drying speed, run it for that full drying time, and then ramp it all down. Um, and we've determined all of these parameters based on our testing. So to give you an example, hit run. You see that it started the centrifuge. Um, once it's done filling, turns the pump off, spins the centrifuge up to full speed, um, which in this case is 1,000 RPM, and then now it will spin and dry for 120 seconds, and then it'll stop automatically for 